Hey guys, NJ here, and we're having a look today at some new ISDT stuff. Now, um, you'll know I'm a pretty big fan of this stuff. I've been using the ISDT, uh, this is the SC608 uh, field charger, little 150 watt field charger. Um, and I've been using this, well, ever since I first reviewed it. I'll put a card up in the corner so you can check that review out if you haven't already seen that or don't know about this charger. But yeah, as I said, huge fan, really good. Um, solid, good operating software that has been, you know, absolutely bulletproof and uh, rather brilliant. And um, yeah, there's not too much more to say about this other than it's it's been really functional. One of the biggest things I loved about this charger was its enormous uh, wide input voltage range, where a lot of kind of cheaper chargers tend to fall over, is they they tend to not be able to accommodate for the higher voltages. Um, and if you have a, a bunch of 6S packs or something, a large capacity lipo that you want to take down the field to charge your smaller lipos, your kind of quad size lipos like this uh, 1500 milliamp uh, AC pack here, the 75C job, then um, you really need to put something pretty hefty in here down at the field. So obviously catering up to 32 volts, you can put a pretty damn big pack in there. Um, not to say that you can't also charge smaller batteries and use this as your power source. Um, it's really got quite a lot of options. Um, with that uh, nice two success input on that side. Anyway, uh, as I said, um, I've been a fan of their stuff and I always ask for anything new by ISDT to be sent to me because I'm always intrigued to see what they do. Um, so yeah, there's that guy. As I said, huge fan. They also sent through uh, a while back, again, I did a quick review on that, this battery checker, the BCAS. Also great, a uh, good little thing to have. It's got a LiPo alarm, but really it's just good to have a little cell checker um, with you at all times anyway, just to see how your LiPos are doing, maybe check them at the end of a flight, um, see, see how things are. So again, uh, something I reviewed in the past. Also, over time, found that to be very good. Now, onto the new things. Um, there is this guy. This is the... ISDT D2 and what we have here is kind of um, it's it's basically it's two of these guys uh, pretty much put into uh, you've got one for each side here so you you have two separate um, operating systems dealing with uh, two outputs here so you can basically charge two batteries at once um, but the reason it's obviously that bit chunkier as well is because it has an AC to DC converter built right into it so you will have to run it off the mains um, it will uh, run off um, uh, the US mains uh, sort of 110 voltage right up to 240 voltage here in the UK with no problem at all. Um, and we have here, it's a dual charger, 200 watts, uh, 12 amps output. Um, and then in terms of the interface, it's pretty much everything that we've come to know and uh, get used to uh, as we do have in this smaller charger. And there's also the 300 watt version of that, which is also a field charger. Um, there is a couple of other extra bits. So the way this works, um, it, you basically hit one of these buttons here. So uh, number one will deal with kind of the left side of the charging unit. And then if you press number two, you get the interface for the right side. And as I said, they kind of work completely independently. In terms of navigating the uh, menu here, um, you'll do it with this, it's kind of like a mouse wheel. Um, now, I must say, this is probably the only bit I don't like, um, and it was something that I didn't really like on the 300 watt version of this. This, by far, was my favorite uh, mode of operation here. Really nice tactile scroll wheel, and uh, you push in the side, and it just it was just really nice to use, and it's still been solid and mechanically good. I had some problems with the 300 watt one that I was sent, where this actually got stuck as you were scrolling. Um, this one doesn't appear to have that problem, but as I said, it doesn't feel very nice. It doesn't always manage to uh, scroll the interface um, sort of one click at a time. Sometimes it will skip. So it's, it just doesn't feel quite as nice. Maybe something they can fix with firmware updates. Um, all of these uh, ISDT products can be updated. Um, you can get one of the update cables which look like this, they're only a few bucks, um, and it basically turns it into a uh, kind of an audio jack connection which goes into the side. Um, I think they are now starting to move over to standard uh, micro USB. Um, there's a new product here I'll talk about in a little while, um, which does have that, but this one, the D2, does use this kind of audio jack interface. And I'm pleased to say that the software update side of things is actually really solid. It's a single zip file you download, and it's one button, and you're updating. You can even change the name 
um, up the top here to say you know whatever you want there's there's a couple of little features in there but it's very easy to update and the updates seem to come fairly frequently um, to keep up with the times so um, if you're going to get one of these IST DT products I'd suggest getting one of these little updaters along with it when you order it um, in terms of the functionality, as I said, same as in my other reviews, um, most of this is all dealt with automatically. In terms of the tasks, you literally have charge, discharge and storage. Um, charge is always going to be a balanced charge. If you don't have the balanced cable, connect, uh, cable connected, it is going to whinge about it unless, of course, you're doing something other than LiPos, like a NICAD charge, etc., or a nickel metal hydride. Um, so that's how you select that. You can select your battery type there. Um, you can look at your cell voltage and customize that. Um, you could take that up to 425 uh, per cell if you were charging lithium high volts, for instance. Um, although I've got a feeling it's probably an auto, is it an automatic selection? Yeah, it is. Actually, there you go. You can choose uh, lithium high volt. Oh, sorry, my mistake, of course, that does go to 4.35 per cell. Um, so that is also an option. Um, so you can see there, uh, lithium high volt, lipo, lithium ion, uh, LIFE, uh, lead acid, and then nickel metal hydride or uh, nickel cadmium. So yeah, all, all uh, available there. And just to very quickly show you what that looks like, I've got uh, two 4S packs uh, put in here. One is my uh, AC pack, the other one is this Ready Eddy 90C1350, uh, both 4S. If I go over to this side, so this will be interface one, and then I select here, I can start a charge task. Let's change that away, make sure that's correct on lithium polymer, which it now is. Uh, let's do a 2.5 amp charge. We press start task and there you go. You can see that is now on its way. Another nice thing you'll see as well, if we scroll down one, although this probably won't show it just yet, um, you will get a reading for the resistance of each cell. Now, there's obviously a big debate on just how accurate these things are in terms of their ability to measure internal resistance and you'll start to see these figures appear um, certainly towards the end of the charge, but it will be an important indicator as if uh, if any of these are particularly far out from each other and I think that's a really important thing especially for you guys who like to do things like parallel charging um, it's important to make sure that one of your packs hasn't got say one cell that's oh there we go you can see it's come up now so this is well within tolerance I've got no problem with this here if you saw one of these with a really high resistance the first indicator of that you'd notice is that the cell would take a lot longer to balance the charge would seem to take forever that last 5-10% of charging where it's doing the balancing would suddenly take an awfully long time. That's a real indicator that a cell is out of balance. Um, that's out of balance and that the resistance is going high on one of the cells. So you can go into this menu and have a little look here and you'll get a really good indicator. At that point, if I saw that happening with a cell um, on one of my packs, I just wouldn't risk it, I wouldn't be charging it anymore, I wouldn't be using it, that would be one that I would discharge safely and throw away and that is just a rule that I've stuck by because we don't want house fires. Um, so that is something that is a very welcome feature and again has been really solid for me on these chargers. So a really great thing to have. So anyway, say we've got this one charging, now you can see that's ramped up to its 2.5 amp and you can see the milliamps going in. If we go over to uh, number two, so this is now dealing with this one. Let's say we wanted to do, uh, let's say we wanted to discharge this one um, and then we can press start current settings I think, well it says we could discharge it at 2 amps and no, normally it won't allow you to do that but if it does we'll see what it manages to ramp up to. You can hear the fans kicking in because the only real way to discharge this stuff is through heat. Uh, heat dissipation so those fans are going to kick in and try and help uh, cool this thing down as it does its best possible job of discharging this pack. Obviously the easier way to discharge a pack like this would be to come and fly it but really this is just a point of exercise to show you that it can be done and as I thought even though I said a uh, 2 amp discharge this is the most it can manage 300 milliamps um, through heat dissipation so it's going to take a long time but at least we know it can be done and I'm just going to stop that um, because it's noisy. If I change that back to a charge cycle, um, let's do that. Let's do, let's have this one say at uh, 1.6 amp charge. And press start. 
And there we go, that guy's going to head off and start doing its thing. And then I literally press between one and two to go and look at the two interfaces individually. But those two things are being dealt with and these are, are now on their way for doing what I want them to do. So yeah, all great. So there isn't an awful lot more to say about this. I love the ISDT stuff. It's really solid. It's safe. Um, I've been really happy with the way um, that these things all work and I've had nothing that um, concerns me. And certainly in terms of build quality, component use, just everything about these I've, I've been really impressed with. And more importantly, the price is great on, on pretty much all of these uh, ISDT products. This is probably the, the most dear in terms of cost compared to all of them because you do have that AC dc converter built in um, one other thing that it does supply here you'll see there is actually a 5 volt 2 amp output on the side here so you can use this to charge up your gopro or your phone or whatever else you have here so it's a nice little function uh, to add to the charger um, one thing that i think they could have really done here was to also add a uh, an input let me just unplug this so i can show you the other side um, if we spin this guy round, you can see it's got that standard uh, cable in. I'm sure you've got loads of those lying around the house um, uh, to run it. But there's, an, I don't see why they didn't just do the same as they did on this and at least add that XD60 input as well, because then you'd have an, an, a whole lot of extra multifunction to this should you want to take this out and about with you if you were traveling and, and or going on a field trip for the day. Um, I mean, it's fine for me. I've got both, and I use this one when I'm out and about traveling, and I'd use this one at home, but, you know, that's something they could have quite easily stuck in, and you'd be able to take this with you and use it should you so desire. So anyway, um, as I said, very impressed with that that's a great charger there will be links into the, in the description to this um this was sent to me of course by banggood uh many thanks to them for sending this over to me there is a sale on at the minute and i think it's something like 11 percent off um across the whole store so um if this is something you're interested in i'll put links to all of these in it might not be such a bad idea to pick one up before that um sale ends later this evening um, what else do we have to show? So this is the new Battery Go. Now this is an interesting product. So as I said before, they already have a really competent little cell checker that um, was released. And I really like this little guy. This stays in my bag, use it to check things. Uh, while I'm out and about and flying packs or you know sometimes you get confused about which batteries you've used and which you haven't if you've got a load sitting there you know quick check one of these and you know which one to put on your quad and go flying um, so this is kind of doing a very similar thing and let me just plug a battery into the balance port so you can see uh, what's going on what you'll notice is that this guy has a display size which is much bigger same size as all the other uh, chargers and uh, checkers in their fleet um, but it does go to one more decimal place, you'll notice, so even more accurate it would seem. So that's not a bad thing. Um, as well as being able to see the individual cell voltages, one neat little feature here, and I guess this is down to you whether this would be a useful feature to you or not, is you can actually do a uh, balance straight from this. So I can leave this running now, and you can see that fourth cell is a little bit out. The other three are one, two, and three are slightly over. Um, so this will now set about discharging the top three and balancing it up so all four of those are in alignment. Now, how useful is that? Well, if you're already balanced charging, it's not really the um, biggest thing in the world to be also be doing it here. Um, but if you've got a lot of batteries lying around the house, some stuff you've had sitting that's been sat for a while doing nothing, you know, some of my batteries have been sat for a year, I've got some big success packs that haven't done anything. I suppose it's nice if any of them have drifted to be able to plug it in and just sort of balance charge them there without having to pull them across and do it all on the, you know, on your regular charger. Um, it really is up to you whether you think that's a feature that's that's useful to you or not, but this does do it. Um, what's more interesting about this is it does carry something called um, Battery Go technology. Now this is something that ISDT are uh, working with this company to try and develop this Battery Go technology. It's not available yet, I don't believe, so I'm going to revisit this once Battery Go technology becomes a thing. But what I think is going to happen is there will be some kind of chip that will be on the battery itself, um, collecting data about each of the cells as they get used. And then there will be a third pin that will be uh, on the edge here. Well, judging from the connector, I don't know if we can see that there, if I just try and focus a little bit can you see this third pin up the top here 
right in the middle of the connector so that between the three we'll be able to send some data back from the main XT60 connection um, back to here and analyse it um, and get some information about uh, this battery um, in more detail than we could any other way um, certainly from the flight and how it was so I'm, I'm super interested in this battery go technology at the minute um, the way you would access this battery go technology is to hold down the power button if you give it a single press you get to the menu um, but if you hold it down we get an acknowledgement beep of wanting to go to a menu but obviously there's no connection or any information to send to this battery go connector so this is kind of premature in its release in that you know in 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 terms of uh, you know a function that's there but no uh, no batteries with this technology supported to be able to do anything with so um, it's hard to recommend this right now uh, until they they do that um, in terms of other features uh, if we look through this is all pretty it's got the low voltage alarm um, so you could use it as a voltage alarm if you wanted I don't know if you certainly not one you could fly with because it's absolutely huge um, but the rest of it is pretty much uh, the same as what you would expect. There is one option here you'll notice which is USB charge um, and that's quite a cool thing so I could take, let me see if I can uh, grab here a USB cable and pop that in there and then what I'll do, I'll just, this is a good way to check if this is working or not, I'm going to throw this in my Samsung phone and see if this how fast this thing charges. So if we go up to USB charge and start, is it going to work? Oh no, hang on. I've got to plug in the main battery lead. That's probably what's stopping me. So let's do that. There we go. Now, so we can be able to handle the current of that. Should do it now. There we go. So we have a. Uh, we have some USB power and it looks like at the minute it even shows you what kind of current it's drawing. So 400 milliamps being drawn, showing you the input battery voltage at 16.13. So we've got an almost full uh, LiPo here. Um, and in, oh, that's gone up to 1.4 amps. And on here, let's see if my phone will actually give me some information. Yeah, you can actually see here fast charging. So it is delivering. Um, a nice fast charge rate so that's great and apparently this is rated to do 2 amps quite happily and I, I certainly believe it they've, they've yet to say they'll do something and not deliver um, so you've got a nice USB uh, fast charge option there as well should you want it so it's pretty cool I like the fact that it's got a couple of new features here um, I think in terms of some other things apparently it can measure uh, receiver inputs you can analyze those as well that's something quite interesting if you plug a a servo connector into there you can look at that and then as I mentioned uh, earlier we won't require the update cable like this guy because it does have an actual micro USB to update which hopefully all their stuff will now come with moving forward because obviously it makes a lot more sense we've all got thousands of those cables kicking around um, so yeah that's quite a nice little uh, nice little unit probably a little bit um, a little bit premature in its release uh, but I'm sh I shall certainly be keeping an eye on this battery go thing and when that comes out I will of course do another update video on this guy. Anyway there are lots of links in the description to go and check out for all this ISTT stuff and uh, yeah there's loads more coming on the channel over the next week or two. A lot of stuff that I've uh, been received that I've received and I'm going to be reviewing so please do stick around and I shall see you guys in the next one.